Hello, I am so glad that you're able to join me today. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, I invite you to do so. Our topic for today is about interview tips. I know the hiring season starts January, but I heard also that the interviews have been starting already. I understand why visa sponsors are interviewing as early as this month because there is really a huge shortage of teachers in the United States. In fact, even up to this point, the first semester is already ending. There are so many schools there that still have a lot of teaching positions to be filled in. At this point, if you are applying, however, it will not be for the current school year. It's going to be for the next school year, 2023-2024. Okay, so again, our topic for today is teacher qualifying interview tips. So at this point, you should already have done your initial interview. The initial interview is about confirming your eligibility requirements, like your teaching experience, your teaching license, your bachelor's degree. It may be short, it may be long, it really depends. Okay, maybe when they want to clarify a lot of things, it can take longer for you. For others, they may have turned in everything and they're all clear, so the visa sponsors will just ask you a couple of questions to kind of confirm some things, okay? Remember that there are many applicants, not just from the Philippines. And being scheduled for an interview is already a step closer to your goal of teaching in the U.S., if that's your goal. And so I want to congratulate you at this point. So you just have to continue with the process, continue to make good impressions, because this is not going to be the only interview that you will have. Like I said, these tips that I'll be giving to you will be for kind of like the second interview after passing the first one, which is just about confirming your eligibility requirements. Excuse my voice because I have been under the weather for a couple of days now, so I'm kind of, you know, I have clogged nose, etc. I'm coughing. Assuming that you have already turned in all the paperwork, all the documents are asking you to complete the next interview should be the interview with the employer It's either the school principal or anyone from the district like in my case I was not interviewed by the school principal where I worked but I was interviewed by uh, one of the officers in the district and then I met him there so in this video I want to go over some preparation reminders some tips about how to introduce yourself because that's usually the beginning of the interview. I will also cover some principles when answering the questions during the interview. And lastly, I have some sample questions that I have been asked during my time. I think I did well <laughs> because I've been successful. If you are new in this channel, I have been back in the Philippines. I have already completed my five years in Florida. I was teaching 11th and 12th graders there, physics and math. My vlog is about sharing my experience so that teachers who are also aspiring to be teaching in the U.S. could get some insights, get some ideas, some tips about the application process and you know just anything about teaching in the U.S. Let's start with preparation reminders. The first one is you you want to watch videos about interviews. There are so many Filipino teachers also from other nationalities that have been doing vlogs about doing interviews for teacher applicants in the U.S. So definitely watch those so you get some ideas and also make sure to practice since the interview will be in English your practices should also be in English, obviously. <laughs> As a foreign teacher, it is acceptable that we sound differently than the Americans. It is acceptable that we have a certain accent. As long as the accent is not interfering with, you know, understanding of the students when we are doing our classes, it should not be a problem because they're used to having so many different nationalities in the U.S. So listening to people speaking in different accent is fine so you should not worry about your accent but you can also obviously improve on your accent because i have to tell you this can be a reason for some of the kids to you know make fun of you if you have a thick accent 
Besides watching videos about interviews, I suggest that you also watch videos about current events related to education so that you will be aware of the issues that they're facing currently in the US when it comes to schools, students, you know, education in general. You may be asked about these things. And also during the interview, you don't want to sound like you're racist or sexist or that you're ignorant, basically. So it is really important to also watch videos like that. Dress appropriately. They will not ask you to stand. So we were laughing when we were sharing our experiences, you know. We were wearing like formal tops and then we we're wearing shorts or pajamas at the bottom. So just in case, just wear um, pants in case they ask you to stand. But um, I haven't heard of anyone being asked to stand. But just be prepared, so prepare something that's comfortable and also professional looking for your interview. Okay, one of the other things that you need to prepare, especially if you live with other people in your house or your apartment, make sure to inform them about your scheduled interview and remind them not to interrupt you during your interview. So they have to know when your interview is, what time. If you are a mom or dad, you have kids, so make sure to do arrangements for someone to take care of your kids, whatever they need during the time that you are in an interview because you won't be able to attend to them, obviously. If you have pets around as well, make sure to make some arrangements so that they will not be in the way during the interview. So you don't want, you know, dogs barking, rooster, cockling. So if you're in a neighborhood that's kind of loud, you may want to consider a different place for your interview. It's just one day anyway. In fact, what others did was to, you know, check in to hotels for a couple of hours no just for this interview it's not going to be every day anyway you just want to have a peaceful clean place where you can focus on the interview because all of the interviews are done virtually through zoom i don't know what the others are using you want to make sure that you have a steady and strong internet connection check your surroundings where you'll be having your interview there might be some things there that can be seen through the camera that's inappropriate. For instance, your naked partner or your underwear that's been drying in the back. You know, those things, you know what I mean. If you are given the option to choose the date and time for the interview, I have some suggestions. Choose a time and date when you know it's not too busy at home or when you know that you will already have enough time to get rested and to prepare for your interview. Also choose a date that's not too far in the week because you want your interview process to be done as soon as possible so that the entire application process will not take too long. Most interviews begin with self-introduction. So make sure that you mention your name, your bachelor's degree, other degrees you have earned, if you have master's degree, PhD, also mention about your teaching experience, how long you have been teaching, what grade levels you've been teaching or have taught in the past. Also include the subject area or areas. The third one will be some principles in answering questions. The interview questions are rarely objective type ones. So unless they would like to confirm some information that you have put in your application forms. For instance, they want to confirm something about your bachelor's degree. So otherwise, there are no right or wrong answers, so you can answer freely and comfortably. It is very important to listen and understand the question you are being asked about. This is one of the ways they can assess your English proficiency and comprehension because as you know, I have mentioned this in my other vlogs, they do not ask about IELTS or TOEFL results for English proficiency certification. So they assess you by how you answer the questions, also how you communicate with them through the email exchanges that you have. If the question is not clear to you or there are some terms that you don't understand, do not hesitate to ask them to repeat the question for you or to explain that term that you are not understanding. This is fine because sometimes they use terms that we're not using from where we are, but obviously do not overdo this because it will be annoying for the interviewer if they have to keep repeating the questions for you. Next, be direct to the point. Do not be too wordy. Blah! 
blah, blah, blah. Avoid using highfalutin words. You can think of conversational English, but do not be too informal with your choice of words and expressions. Remember, this is an interview for a teaching position. Because, you know, sometimes with our intention of sounding eloquent or proficient in English, we are tempted to be too wordy or we use words that are not commonly used. It could sound pretentious or pompous. And some applicants tend to kind of do lectures, you know, mentioning terms and then even defining them. The ones who are interviewing you are also in the education field. So it's very likely that they know what you are talking about already. Because for instance, in EPI, most of them were former educators as well. And you want to be direct to the point because as you know, time is very important to them. They have a lot of scheduled interview for that day. It's definitely not just you for that day. So they want to know you in that short period of time. So you don't want to waste time by, by being too wordy, by beating around the bush. So you want to be straightforward and as clear as possible so they don't have to ask you to repeat your answer. And this is probably one of the most important things I want you to remember when you are doing your interviews. Do not forget to give all of your answers based on your own experiences, based on your own ideas, on your own perspective. The last thing that you want to happen is to sound like Google or one of the speakers you've had in your seminars that you have attended in the past. The purpose of the interview is for them to know you as a teacher by your answers, by giving them concrete examples that you're doing in your own classes. They can kind of picture you out if you are already in the classroom in the United States. So because they cannot go here and watch your classes and see how you're doing, that is why it's very important to always give concrete examples that you are using in your own classes or you have tried in your own classes. That way, the focus is on you. They will be able to get to know you as a teacher and they will see whether you fit in the kind of classroom environment you will be having, suppose they hire you. So again, make sure that what you are giving them is not something that you borrowed from Google from the seminars from another teacher. Make sure that it's something that you have tried and experienced yourself. I'm sure I have been asked more than these numbers of questions that I remember from my interview when I was applying, but these are some of the things that I remember. And I have also asked some people what they have been asked about doing an interview, so I would like to share that with you as well. I know this video is now getting super long, but you know, stick around till the end. Because you might be asked the same question, at least you have some ideas on possible answer you can give or these answers hopefully will guide you, create your own answer. Like I said, it should be based on your own experience, your own perspective. What is your teaching principle? As a teacher, I believe in the importance of relevance of the lesson that we are giving to the students. So I am teaching cadets who are ages 19 to 25 and they're already preparing for their career. So when I do our physics classes, I make sure that our lessons are based on what they do on board so that they know that the things that we are covering in class, even though they can be difficult, they will be useful when it's time for them to work in merchant ships. I either in the deck or the engine department. As a concrete example, I even wrote a book about teaching physics in the context of the maritime field. I know that you are handling regular classes, but did you have any experience handling students who might have extra needs or special needs in your class? How did you handle that? Well, I did have an experience. I had a student who would not cry or complain even if he got himself. So. I make sure that our lesson, especially when we do have activities that require us to use materials like scissors or cutter, I make sure that I have something else for him so that he can still participate in the activity, but at the same time, he's still safe. So we have come to the end of the video. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.